Today we have the pleasure of ha having Alex hit on the podcast. And Alex was actually the person to me that changed my opinion about affiliate marketers because before that I was, uh, after meeting Alex, I was like, they're not all that bad. Some of them are good. It's at least <laughs> Alex is. Uh, it's just going to be a little bit about affiliate marketing. Going to talk about that a little bit later. But first, I wanted to talk about networking because that's kind of how a lot of people meet Alex. I know that's how he do, does a lot of his business, be through networking events. I must say he's doing really well. It's definitely one of my favorite ones throughout the week, the ones he hosts. We're going to make sure to have the links to him down below. So tell us a little bit more, Alex. Who is Alex Hit and how did you, why did you start networking? Yeah, well, thanks for having me on the podcast, Moss and Mike, appreciate it. Yeah, a lot of people know me as the networking guy. I'm a very well-connected networker. I've been doing online networking for three years. I run my own meetings. I have about 15 or more live online meetings per week that are specifically for small business owners, entrepreneurs, people looking to start an online business, essentially. How I got into it was I was actually an award-winning international hotel manager, and I moved to Hawaii two months before the pandemic. And so I got this brand new job on the beach, was about to make six <laughs> figures as a 27-year-old, my brand new five-star hotel, you know, on the beach. And then they call me on my first day and they said, don't come into work today. You're laid off because of COVID. Didn't qualify for unemployment, no benefits, $2,000, brand new $2,000 rent payment right there on the beach. And I had to figure it out. So I drove food delivery. I flipped furniture on Facebook. I had an online job. I did this. I did that. did a bunch of different stuff. And, uh, and then eventually found online business networking and was able to kind of connect with online entrepreneurs and learn about their business. And I really liked it because it was kind of like working at a hotel. You had to meet a lot. I used to meet 200 mm. new people every single day at a hotel. Well, now we have people in a Zoom room and we get to meet and greet and, hey, how are you? Where are you from? What do you do? And how can I help? And so for me, it's kind of like running a big hotel again, right? Um, but I, I, I was introduced originally to other people's online networking events. During COVID, they were very popular. Right. You had you, you could just put an event online and 100 people would show up because everybody <laughs> was at home. Right. Um, and I really liked it because, like I said, you got to meet a lot of people. I love meeting people and, and talking to people. And I went through a couple of different business iterations. You know, when I first started, I was actually a real estate agent. I became a real estate agent in Hawaii. I sold three million dollar houses in Hawaii. I was pretty successful at it. Um, but <clears throat> I, I didn't really want to be a real estate agent forever. So as I was doing this online business networking as a real estate agent, I started to learn about what other people were doing, how people were coaching people online or how people were selling courses or how people were doing this and that. And so I launched my first course and I launched my first coaching program and I called it the TikTok for business group. And so back in 2021, I was coaching people on how to use TikTok for their business. And I grew a group to over a hundred people and sold courses and it made a pretty good amount of money. And, uh, then I, I, I started really getting into hosting and launching my own events. I was going to other people's events. And I said, wow, this is an amazing marketing opportunity. This is an amazing marketing vehicle for your business. So I started hosting my own events. And my events were even bigger than other people's. Because I, I knew some things about social media. I, I'm pretty savvy at social media. That's what a lot of people know me by is my savvy social media strategy. And uh, yeah, I just started hosting my own events. And they were really big and really successful. And I was a pretty good host. And so I just kept them rolling. And like I said, I, I think I run you know, 15 or more events per week, every week. And I've done that for the last two years. So that's kind of my story. And we have the, we have the event on Monday, speed networking. We do that every single Monday and every Monday we get, you know, you, you're there, you know, 70 to hundred people on a weekly basis into a zoom room. We do a lot of connecting, a lot of networking. And over the last three years, I've just been very organized and very focused on growing my network and cat, you know, tracking information, getting people's phone numbers, email addresses, finding the connections, and uh, then they're just following up and, and staying connected with people. So that's a little bit about my story. Yeah. We kind of hint a little bit into the next question I wanted to ask you, because what, in your opinion, is the best approach to use networking to grow your business? Um, I'm a, I'm a, I would say the finding, you know, when people say, Hey, I want to grow an online business, right? You have to think about what is your ideal customer. And a lot of people get kind of like 
off track. They think, oh, my ideal customer is somebody who does who uh, is a business owner or having a business between this much and this much. Well, if the medium that you sell through is Zoom, right? If if the way that you sell somebody is through a Zoom call, well, then the first requirement is that that person is willing to hop on Zoom. But a lot of people, they, they don't think about that, right? And so I have made a database, a huge database of business owners who do this, who do online business networking. And so I'm very focused on finding people who like doing that and then creating communities of people and kind of huddling them around it. Then they really like what I'm doing, right? They love the events that I hold or the trainings that I do. And so they also invite other people of like kind. And so that's kind of a secret to what I do is I give people a reason to come back to my meetings and also invite their friends. So I would say if you do want to get into this online business networking thing, one, you have to be incredibly organized and you have to take notes on every single person, every single person's information that you see in the chat, email addresses, phone numbers. I mean, I literally have a database of thousands and thousands of people's, not only their phone number, the email address, not even just a CRM, but who they are, what their business does, who are their clients, right? Who do they serve? Who are they looking to connect with? And then I'm having these really high impact events for absolutely free. I'm providing massive value to a mass amount of people week after week for two years. You know what I mean? So, um, and I haven't always been successful in my business. You know, the first two years of my business, I struggled so hard because I didn't know anything about online business. I didn't know anything about sales. I didn't know anything about online marketing. You know, I learned it all on the job, on the fly, just by networking and talking to other people. So I've been on well over 2,000 one-on-ones. I've hosted well over 2000 events. I've posted over 4,000 videos to social media. I mean, I've done this online business networking thing intense for, you know, two, three years now, right? Three years. And I've just been very di diligent about getting everybody's information, tracking it, and then following up and re-engaging people and inviting people to events and, and sharing what's new with me and what's going on and asking them, you know, what's new in their business and how we, I can help and how I can support. And now people just know me as like, you know, the guy who knows the guy type of thing, right? Go to Alex because he can connect you with the right people. And so that's a big key too, is now people really know me by the network and know if there's somebody new who needs to get started in their business, we'll introduce them to Alex because I can speed them up in the process, right? So I get a lot of referrals now. I, I always gotten a lot of referrals, but I get a lot of people just referring people to me and then I can plug them into an established, already large you know, developed network of fellow entrepreneurs. But a lot of times when you're networking, you're not networking to make a sale. And I don't like that. Like I'd rather make a sale, but a lot of times it's for business development, for building your network, for building that, that referral to, to bring people in. And then I'm just a big believer in size. You have to go big. You have to have so many connections. You have to post so many more social media videos. You have to have so many more followers, so many views, way more 10 X more than you think to get to the level of your business that you want. I loved when I went to your um, speed networking and I signed up to go to more of them because I was running into more people who like myself are not there trying to make a sale right away. And that's something that really turns me off. If I go into any sort of a meeting and it's, you know, sales pitch, sales pitch, it's like that it's different. Someone describing what they do is very different than pushing for a sale. And so that's one thing I really appreciate. It's the reason I invited people to come. Right. So what, what are some tips you have for us um, newbies to your events? Like what, what's a good way to connect? And... Well, I do think it is about what? brand recognition, name recognition. So that's where I, m I mentioned the, the size and the amount of connections, getting the offer, getting your business in front of people, right? Not necessarily selling it, but, you know, they have to know about it, right? And so I <laughs> do a good job at, you know, people say, Alex, you're famous. Everybody talks about you. Does that equate to money? Well, not directly, but over time, right? Because people know me, they remember me, they trust me, they like me. And eventually they're saying, you know what? Alex is doing something over here. You know, I, I've thought about working with him in the past and a lot of sales is just timing. So it's not only getting in front of them, being remembered, but when the time is right, being in front of them again. And so I've created these weekly events where I'm constantly in front of people. I'm constantly reminded they're constantly reminded of me and I'm, con I'm consistently over long periods of time giving them value, connections, networking events, trainings, courses, right? Free, connecting them with a really large network of people, right? And they just have all this goodwill and they, oh my gosh, how can I help Alex, right? Because he's given so much to me, not just once, but over a long extended period of time, years. 
right? And then two, I mean, it's positioning. A lot of people mess this up, but like, and I dealt with this a lot as a young entrepreneur and I'm still a young entrepreneur, but like you have to have a vehicle that allows you to get to where you want in your business. Like a lot of people, when they first start off in online business, they're selling a product that can never make them a lot of money. They're selling coaching for a hundred dollars an hour. You have to do so much coaching. You have to do so in, and over a long period, you know, it, that's just not a, a scalable business. And so positioning, and this is where I get into high ticket affiliate marketing, high ticket B2B affiliate marketing, that's putting you in the, in the position to have a big sale, to have a big win. And so, and it also diversifies the amount of offers that you can give. Cause I'm an affiliate of thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of businesses, products, courses, digital products. And so I could now talk to almost anybody and I have something that I can monetize from that relationship through affiliate marketing. And so if you're going to be making all these connections and referring all these businesses, well, have the system in place for you to monetize those connections and those referrals and those recommendations. And that's done through affiliate marketing, specifically B2B affiliate marketing. And that's what I would say. Like, that's a, something that I didn't do soon enough was I didn't monetize. I, I was focusing on one product and one item. And that's what a lot of businesses say. Hey, folks, and I'm, and I'm not saying don't do that. You do want to market one thing, but you want to be able to make money off of the connections and the relationships and the recommendations that you're already making. And that's part of the positioning, right? Is that you have to put yourself in the position to have a big payday. You're never going to get paid $10,000 unless you send somebody a link where they can pay $10,000. You know what I mean? But most business owners, ne <laughs> like, how are you going to make $10,000 if you never send somebody a link where they can buy something for $10,000? There's a zero chance. Well, if you at least have the link and you send it to one person, well, then you've opened up that opportunity. And so you have to open up these opportunities for yourself to have these big wins. But they seem mm -hmm. kind of inaccessible for a lot of new entrepreneurs because can that really happen? Yeah, like these things can happen, but you have to create the channel for that money to actually flow into your pocket. You're so right. You're so right. You got to thing a lot of people, as you mentioned, do forget is you have to create your own opportunities. One of the previous guests talks about there was different kinds of luck and one of the types of luck, what was the type of luck you create for yourself? Well, if you don't put your business in front of anybody, if you don't, as you mentioned, send the link, how are they going to buy from you? They don't even know you're selling something. That's right. And it, even like big companies sometimes forget it's their responsibility to tell people I have something right. that could benefit you. Right. So what, how do we go about pitching that in a nice way on a networking meeting or on a one-on-one -on -one call, I guess would actually be a, a more interesting question. I want to go there instead. Do you mean, how would you promote an affiliate offer? Yeah. An offer of, it could be an affiliate. It could be your own offer, but going about it, so you don't come off as pushy. That's like the worst thing that can basically happen. Yeah. I mean, I talk about s selling with hospitality, hotel manager, right? Selling with hospitality. S hospitality is about anticipating needs before they happen. When I serve somebody a coffee, well, guess what? You ever read the book? How, how, uh, if you give a mouse a cookie, right? If you give a mouse a cookie, he's going to want some milk. And after he has some right. milk, he's going to want a napkin. And after he wants a napkin, he's going to want to brush his teeth. And after he brushes his teeth, he's want to, you know, bet, read it. So when you, when you introduce something to, some, to somebody, there's a series of, of things that is going to happen after that, that you need to anticipate and manage and control and anticipate the need of the customer. So part of that is understanding the objections. When I bring this up, I anticipate and I know there are going to be objections. And so can I even change the offer, how I present the offer so those objections are addressed beforehand? Before I introduce my, hey, I have this product, it's $10,000, it's too expensive, right? Well, how can I manage that objection, that need before it arises, right? How can I use hospitality? How can I self, and that's, and then also too, maybe it isn't appropriate to introduce that sale, right? Maybe I need to do the legwork or, or demonstrate the need or, or, 
ask them questions for them to discover they need themselves. So, I mean, and I'm not, I'm not a sales trainer. I'm not a sales expert. And, um, and, and to be honest, I thought I wasn't a very good salesperson until I found a product that people actually really needed and really wanted. And then, it, and then I, you know, I, I sell a ton. So a lot of times people think, oh, I'm a bad salesperson. It actually might just be your product. Your product might not be desirable. It might not be worth it. There might not be a market for it. And so I, I do think when you have a product that is irresistible, um, as long as you're presenting that product when the person's in an open and receptive state of mind, there's not a lot you have to do on the sales side of things because the product should technically speak for itself. But if you approach somebody in an incorrect way or you maybe present it too early or it's uncalled for, well, then they're going to be closed minded. And it does, you could offer them a check for a million dollars and they'd say, no, I don't want that. That's a scam. And you're like, no, it's literally a check for a million dollars. And they say, nah, I'm good. And I've had that, but if you really believe in your product, you really believe in your service and you really believe that you can help people, that's sometimes how it feels, right? You're giving something people really honestly need very badly, but because of, you know, their objections or because of their frame of mind, or just maybe they're not open to it or they're busy or whatever type of excuse, right? Or whatever reason that they have, they're not willing to engage with that or look at that or consider that. So, and, and that, that trust comes through a couple of different things, right? One, it's them understand them feeling like you understand them, that you have empathy towards them. So when I, I talk about creating a video sales letter, one of the recommendations that I make for business owners, you need to create more video content for your business. And that video content should not just be random video content all over the place. It should have a very specific purpose. And the purpose of that video content is to sell your product. And a lot of business owners think they're doing that, but they're actually not doing that. Because that's that sales video follows a very specific structure. Okay. It's called a VSL, a video sales letter. Okay. So I got actually off track. What was I talking about just before the video <laughs> sales letter? <laughs> I was talking about how yeah. do people get that wrong? How do people get what wrong? The video sales letter. Um, they don't they so they create a lot of semi-promotional content they create tips tricks hacks and secrets tips tricks hack tip tips tricks hacks and secrets and even podcast don't actively sell your product a video right. sales yeah. letter walks people through a logical progression to sell your product okay so one of the the video sales letter formats is problem agitation and solution so first i'm going to define your problem the problem that most entrepreneurs have is that they don't make any sales right so that's the problem. Yep. Then what I want to do is I want to agitate the problem or expand on the problem. So it's not only that they don't make sales, they're, they're wasting all of their time on Zoom. They uh, have a bad product, right? They don't know how to market the product. They don't know um, how to ref make a video sales letter, right? So what I'm doing is I'm saying, you don't know how to, how to uh, you have a problem. It's called not making enough sales. Then I'm accentuating the problem, like agitating the problem. Uh, Showing that person who's watching that video, I don't only understand your problem, I understand your problem deeply. I actually understand your problem better than you understand the problem. Why? Well, because I'm the expert and I understand your problem better than you do. But what I'm also doing there is I'm expressing empathy. I'm showing them, hey, I understand your problem and I have empathy for your problem and I actually know how to solve your problem because I've been there. And that's, it's called problem agitation and solution. And so you tell them they have a problem. You then agitate the problem, accentuate the problem. That, that shows that, hey, you can trust me. I understand it. I'm also the expert. And so then they trust me to provide them the solution. And that video is, is between five minutes long and 30 minutes long, essentially. It could be two, but really five to 30 minutes. And so I have a lot of videos on my YouTube channel. And when I'm networking with people, I say, hey, go check out this video. The video is me describing the problem that they already have and actually accentuating the problem, detailing the problem, and then showing them how to fix the problem. And a lot of entrepreneurs, they don't have any video content like that. That really shows that they're the expert. All they do is these tip tricks, hacks and secrets. That's what I did for a long time and it made me $0. Because you're not pushing them into a logical sales, you're not pushing them into a sales process. You're basically saying, here's a bunch of content and none of it is actively promoting a specific product and a specific problem. Because when you sell something, it's got to be like, here's the problem that it solves, right? You get X, Y, and Z, which is going to help you do A, B, and C for this price. 
That makes a lot of sense. It explains a lot of the things I see on LinkedIn and other places. But you say there's all the tips and posts and things coming out, but there's never there's never a clear explanation of how does that person help their intended market. Right. And it's and they do it because it's easy to create. Right. Right. Super and they easy. think, oh, well, this is going to push people to my website and then people are going to go to my website and then they're going to buy my product. Nobody's going to read your website. What they want to watch is a video. Right. People buy from videos. They don't they're not reading and being convinced by email copy, in my opinion. Some people think so, yeah, but not I, I anymore. Don't. Not anymore. Yeah. I think you're definitely right in saying you're going to have a higher likelihood of success with video. Right. And 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 you I'm not saying don't create the tips, tricks, hacks, and secret content, but all of that content should be directing people to that video sales letter, which you're is designed to sell your product. So you you whet their appetite, you you show that you know a little bit something that they may not know, but then you need to push them into a place where there is a sales process. Right. Hmm. I think yeah. we accidentally found what you're talking about. Uh, on our own a little bit, a little, we're kind of on the front end of what you're talking about. We got away from our website and all our posts and stuff. And just as an experiment, Moss started making a bunch of shorts. And we went from averaging about, I don't know, 10 views a week to, we got 75,000 in the first month. It's amazing. So it's like, okay, so yeah, we're, we're kind of getting a picture. You've done <laughs> it at a much, much higher level. Um, but this is, this is really interesting. Because before I saw that it was working, but I didn't know why. Now I'm starting to understand why. Right. Yeah, so all those YouTube shorts are like those promotional videos driving people into exactly. your long-term video podcast. Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. The YouTube is a great platform for that because they have a specific feature to drive. And I, I discovered because I was like, oh, I can watch the full video. I like to watch the full video. I clicked on it. I was like, this is smart. Why, why am I not doing it? <laughs> Why am That's I right. Yep. Sometimes all That's we right. need is somebody else to go first. Yeah. Yep. So, uh, I, it's also great to talk, like hear much, how much you, you focused about value. To you, it's not so much about selling. And one of the big things we also talk about in our content, our messaging, is that only 2% of sales are made up front, basically. It's two or three, depending on what source. But it's one of those two. And it's really to, as you mentioned, getting them at the right time. Yes. So you, could you talk us through like specifically, and this is me that, that's curious, like what does your CRM spreadsheet, whatever you want to call it, actually include? So I do have a spreadsheet of affiliate offers. It's kind of a key to affiliate marketing that when I'm on a, a Zoom call with somebody or when the opportunity arises where I feel like, hey, a recommendation might be appropriate. Well, I don't have to go and search for five minutes for the link. I just literally have a Google spreadsheet that has my top affiliate links on it. And I can in a minute grab that Google spreadsheet and copy and paste a variety of links in the chat. And to them, they think, wow, <laughs> you know, this is amazing. He just gave me five links. They don't know it's my affiliate links and it doesn't really, they don't really need to know. It doesn't cost them anything to use my affiliate link, right? So that is a key is that when, like I said, you don't want, when somebody says, hey, what's the best CRM to use? I don't want to say, let me get back to you in a day once I create my affiliate link to that platform. <laughs> I need to say, here's the link right now. Boom, it's in the chat. Oh, what's the best affiliate platform? Oh, it's go high level. Boom, there's my link. And then, oh, great, thanks. Boom, right in the moment they click on it. Then if they purchase it, well, then I get paid, right? But there's a, there's many, many other platforms or referral programs or, you know, networking introductions that you have to do or that you should do, right? So for some of these other partnerships, these kind of higher level partnerships, I need to already have that relationship established with that business. You know, partnerships are not something that you can just sign up for. They have to be established and then you have to, you know, follow the agreement of the partnership. And so when I see that opportunity arise, well, that's not the time to go out and try to create that partnership with that affiliate that affiliate related business, I need to have that in place already. So that introduction is instant and instantaneous in that sale because time kills sales, right? If somebody's interested, I want it then to be able to go boom, 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 you know, we're right along that sales process with as few delays and hiccups as possible, right? Selling with hospitality, right? You got to make that, 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 um, 
process very, very smooth for people. Because in, and I know this through like sales funnels and stuff. Anytime there's a small hiccup in the process, there's a drop off rate. Right. So anytime somebody is confused by a web page or they're confused about the next step or they don't know what button to click on, there's a large drop off rate. And that's testing, that's, but that's also anticipating what is that customer going to do and what is that customer going to need. And so when somebody says, hey, I want to attend your event, I don't say, here's the event link. I say, great, let me sign you up for the event. I don't need them to go and, and fill out their first and their last name and their email address. I already have it. So why do they need to do it? I can do it for them. I can provide them that hospitality and that support and that service. So when I invite somebody to an event, I just say, hey, would you like to come to this event? Yes, I would. Great. I already signed you up. And they're like, thank you. Because everyone's busy. Everyone is busy. So this is another thing about sales is like a lot of people say, oh, I could do X, Y, and Z for you, but nobody's buying. Well, a lot of times there's a time objection. I'm too busy to even pay it mind. I can't even, I don't even have the horsepower in my brain to even understand the offer, put effort into, under, you know, my, my wife is, you know, just got laid off and my kids are failing out of school. There's all these life distractions. And so, you know, that's part of anticipating the need and just uh, serving the client even before they purchase from you, right? Is making that, that process really simple for them. So again, you kind of answered a bit of the question I wanted to ask you, uh, but Let's actually hear you put your own words on it. What makes you different from other affiliate marketers? Because I know it works. Yeah. I mean, a lot of affiliate marketers focus on like entirely passive social media, uh, SEO, email marketing. I'm doing a much more higher touch affiliate marketing approach where I'm networking with people and sending out affiliate links through networking. So like I'm establishing these online connections, growing an online network, and I'm actually creating a position of leverage versus just like one strategy like SEO. SEO is not a very leveraged strategy, right? One social media account, it's not that leveraged, right? So I'm building my affiliate. And then even with the platform that I use, right? We could talk about the Great Discovery. You know, the Great Discovery is a highly leveraged affiliate marketing platform. And so... I'm looking not just on the first effect, but on the second and third effect, right? And how can I actually create something that's going to grow instead of just kind of have a, a, a steady, you know, how can I create something that, that can actually produce something exponential where I can create a system that's uh, self-feeding and self-growing? And so the online networking events are an example of that. I provide tons and tons of people a high quality service for absolutely free. So they invite people in. Well, now I don't have to invite people in because I have a dispersed network of hundreds of business owners doing it for me. No other affiliate marketer is doing something like that. And I'm providing, I mean, I, and I provided literally thousands and thousands and thousands of hours of complimentary training and support to build no like, and trust with, you know, really large groups of people online. And, and, and also having that sole focus of like, this is my channel, this is my network and just putting effort into that every single day for years. Yeah, you're so right. I was actually, my mind was kind of blown because I signed up for your, your TikTok course today because I want to learn more for TikTok. And I thought, yeah, I'm going to finish it real quick. Then I saw the amount of modules, 63. And I got to be short. But I saw the second one where you had some guests on. I was like, one of the modules is an hour. Damn it. That's not going to be in a week, it looks like. That might be in a couple of weeks. Right. <laughs> You gotta put so, the work in, boss. <laughs> you're right. But I haven't seen like an other free course with that many modules. Like that many modules is modules you see in like a paid course. And right. they rarely get to that point as well. I mean, that's another point too. Like this, we are in an environment that is so saturated with business owners, with online networking events, with podcasts. You know, there's so many people doing similar things. And so I do, I the services that I provide they are better than people's paid products, right? My networking event has more people than the paid networking events and the paid mastermind groups, right? And my courses, my, my free courses is better than people's paid courses, right? And so that's all conditioning my audience 
if you want to say it like that, I don't know if I'd say it like that, but that is, you know, communicating to my audience, Hey, what I do is of exceptional quality. Right. And when you work with me, it's exceptional. It's not good. It's very good. It's above average. Right. So, and that, and that was like, and that's been a key to my marketing is I'm going to give away what other people charge for free to get market share. Right. So other networking events, they charge and they think, oh, that's the way to do it. Well, when you charge for a networking event, you immediately restrict the number of people that go. And then yes. what these networking groups do is they say, hey, I know you came here for online business networking to meet new people. But since we're charging a membership price and we've restricted the amount of people that can come in, this isn't about networking. It's about building relationships. What do the relationships get you? New connections. So why don't we just focus on getting new connections versus building relationships? Now, I love to build relationships, but I have a close relationship with my mom. Um, guess what? She doesn't give me leads, mm. right? So well, it's, it's not nice. the relationship that builds right. the leads, you know, every, you know, and, and, and two, you're in these, you're in these networking groups with people and they say, oh, you're not getting enough leads in your business. Well, it's your fault. You're not building effective relationships. Okay, well, you know what? I might be networking with Moss and Moss might just not even know anybody. It's not because we don't have a deep relationship. It's just because he's he, we've exhausted that network. And so I've always focused on we need to grow. We need to expand the network. We need to bring new people into the network constantly, week after week after week after week. New people, new people, new people, new people. And that's why the networking event on Monday is absolutely free. Because I know for if everyone says you should charge for it. I said, yeah, but if I charge for it, it will restrict the membership and the, and the community would die. So I need to monetize that in a different way. Right. So that's where I see a lot of networking groups fail is that they say, oh, you know, this is a lot of work and it is a lot of work. It's a lot of work to run a meeting every week or multiple meetings every week. You should be paid for it, but it has a detrimental effect to the goal of that meeting, which is to net. Now, if you want yeah. to mastermind or you want to do other things, then sure. But if it's really a networking meeting, well, networking means people and new people all the time. Yeah, it's it's about are you willing to like sacrifice some money up front to to really showcase people? I deliver premium stuff, so pay me premium prices. I don't expect right. you have a lot of objections about why your price is higher than other people. I don't imagine that coming up a lot. Well, I actually have pretty, you know, people can work with me for absolutely free. And I provide exceptional, you know, incredible support, even on a free level, because I have things in place that can leverage that position. I'm not always looking at, hey, how can I get $500 out of this person? Keep the $500. Let's work together to get $5,000 or $50,000 because I know how to leverage relationships to achieve a higher goal than just, you know, if somebody wants, and I'm a new, you know, I was a new entrepreneur. I had no money. I wasn't paycheck to paycheck. I was credit card to credit card. So I understand the financial strain that most um, new entrepreneurs have to deal with. And so I like to help out those new entrepreneurs and I have strategies on social media through online network. You know, I have a lot of different strategies where we can work together. I can actually help you for free literally zero cost but i have a system in place that makes that that makes that relationship very leveraged and so i can you you know we i can collaborate with that person to achieve a higher goal than then me just them just paying me $500 to to coach them on how to run an event or how to launch a podcast or how to have a good online business i'd much rather use that relationship to achieve a higher goal and a much larger goal um so but yeah i mean people are are much more willing you know to work with me. And then the social media is another component of that, right? They're learning about me. I'm educating them through social media, through all the content that I produce, the trainings that I produce. Um, but uh, yeah, like I said, I was, I used to sell expensive coaching, $3,000 coaching. I don't sell coaching anymore, but I mean, that was hard to sell. Even if they knew, like, and trust me, you know, just cause it's a lot of money and it's a big decision. And the ROI is a question mark for them and for me, you know, in coaching too. I mean, Coaching's a coaching's an interesting business and, and a lot of people are coaches and I and I do think coaches are great, but it's it's really hard to make money with coaching long term because you know the, that coaching window expires. There's only so much that any one person can teach another person. 
And so you're constantly on this hamster wheel of, oh, I have to find new clients to coach them. And, and a lot of times, you know, coaching is just accountability. And if let's say I sell a coaching offer and my coaching offer used to be, we meet once a week, but we didn't get a lot done because people weren't very, you know, they weren't doing the stuff they needed to do. And, and sometimes even during the week, it wouldn't even justify an hour long meeting, right? So that kind of coaching model is some, is sometimes hard to monetize depending on what you're selling, just because of the, the results may vary by the person that you're coaching. And then that kind of skews the monetization of it. It's not as predictable as selling a, a physical product or a course or something like that, which has a much more defined kind of, you know, process or, or you know, sales process. So. They're definitely, uh, but go ahead. We've already given our audience so much incredible value today. I've been to some pretty high level business schools from my various companies and You've already talked more today, more practical business advice than most MBAs will ever learn. So thank, well, thank you, you for that. Thank you. I really uh, appreciate that. There, thank you. What's coming up that our audience should know about? What are, um, we'll have links for the speed networking event, of course. What are other Alex hit things? you have any books coming up? Are you going to be national TV, running for office? Any, anything cool coming up? <laughs> no, not running for office. No, no, no. Um, I mean, I'm really interested in making an impact and I, I really love to help people. I mean, I, I can't help myself. I'm a teacher. I like to teach. I, I you know, I come on this podcast and I just can't help but share what I know and share what, you know, I've, I've learned over my kind of entrepreneur journey. Um, but what I'm building now is I'm building a network of coaches, consultants, course creators, entrepreneurs, affiliate marketers, promoters, and creators. And we have a system where, like I said, it's a highly leveraged system where we can all collaborate together co-promote, co-market, partnerships, joint venture, really a, a combination of many of those kind of marketing concepts and putting it into one system and leveraging it for our business. And so I'm really creating a, a community and a group that is, you were saying it earlier, kind of a circular marketing system or, you know, that we can actually collaborate because I've always, I, I'm always a fan of size and scale and impact. And with that is large numbers, but there's never been a system that allows us to all sell our own product, but to get compensated and rewarded for recommending, right? We're always doing this referral marketing. There's never been a system right. or a platform yeah. that, that monetizes that referral marketing, but now we do. We have that system. We have that software that is incredibly advanced and pays us not just for our direct referrals, but for our indirect referrals as well. And so I, that's what I'm really hyper-focused on now is building that community of entrepreneurs, course creators, coaches, promoters, affiliates, and then using collective group strategies to get above the fold. Because I think we all know that we can get much farther together than we can by ourselves, but there's never been a right. platform or a system that has allowed for that type of collaboration, but now we have it. So if you're interested in that, Ooh. yeah, I would just recommend that you connect with me and we can introduce you to the, the software and the system and, and the community. And we have a really, really large community, hundreds and hundreds of people. And in a, in a little bit, it'll be thousands and hopefully next year it'll be tens of thousands and, and then maybe even millions. That's a really cool thing. And I'm, I'm a tech nerd, so I'm really fascinated by the software that, that's that complex. That's high level stuff. It is. Well, Moss, do you have any final questions? I think we, we covered it, it pretty well. Um, my final question was how our affiliate uh, our listeners could um, use <laughs> affiliate marketing. And I guess the answer to that is reach out to Alex on LinkedIn. Yeah. His link is down below. Five years ago, my business partner asked me, if we're so dang smart, how come we're not helping more people? And I said, well, the problem is we're helping people all over the world with various sorts of charity work, but we're not training businesses how to do better. So five years ago, we started this branch of the company to help business, specifically help businesses do better and make more money. So then you can go out and do more good in the world. That's the reason you want to book this call, to find out if what we know and what your business needs intersect. And maybe we can help you. Book the call. Let's talk. It's 30 minutes. Let's find out.